welcome back to the channel. We're coming to you from Cayo Galerma, Cuba, and we're here to share our top travel tips to this amazing kiteboarding destination. Cayo Galerma is a key of the Jardin del Rey located on the northern coast of Cuba. It is a tourist-only destination with no locals living on the island. In fact, the closest city is Moran, which is about two hours away from which the resort staff commutes every single day. With its shallow, clear blue waters and steady trade winds, it's no wonder that Canadian kiters of all skill levels flock here from fall through spring. Cayo Galermo is truly a hidden gem when it comes to kiteboarding. The windy season in Cayo Galermo runs from November through April. The wind here is typically northeast or east-northeast, which is side on shore, but northwest and north winds also work. The water here is quite shallow, especially on low tide, and you'll find some amazing flat water spots or some spots with some small chop. There's a large white sand beach. This is actually man-made, so the sand is quite hard packed. Underwater for the most part is also a nice clean sandy bottom. However, there are patches of seaweed here and there. While the shallow area is quite expansive, there is also an area that is quite a bit deeper, which is perfect for foil boarding. We actually learned to foil board with the short mast in Cayo Galermo. You can watch that video here. While you can most likely get away with bare feet, there are some seashells and, as I found out last year, sea urchins, so you may want to pack your booties just in case. When it comes to wind strength, you can expect anywhere from 10 to 25 knots. Keep in mind though, if you are traveling from a more northern place, the air density here is different, so 20 knots in Cayo Galermo will likely not feel like 20 knots at home. For this reason, we typically pack most of our kites ranging from 9 to 15 meters, as well as our foil board for lighter wind days. We've never actually used our 7 meter kite here as the wind rarely gets that strong. That being said, we have had friends that have used an 8 meter or smaller kite, so it's just in your best interest to check the forecast before you come and pack appropriately. At the very minimum, you can expect around 10 knots or so, with the thermal winds picking up around 5 o'clock on those very light wind days. There are those rare occasions where you get just 10 knots for a week at a time, and in those cases, a foil board will truly be a trip saver. A good tip that we learned recently from a fellow kiter is to travel during full moons, as there's typically wind with a full moon. While we don't have any scientific proof of this, it did prove itself to be true on our current trip. As for the air temperature, obviously the closer to summer you travel to Cayo Galermo, the warmer it's going to be. We've found that between November and April, you can typically expect around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Usually the water is also quite warm and you can get away with kiting in just a bathing suit or board shorts and maybe a rash guard for sun protection. In the winter months, it can be a little bit chillier, especially if a cold front approaches from the north. In that case, you may want to pack a shorty wetsuit or maybe even a full 3-2, especially if you find that you get cold easily or you just want the full protection from the sun. Another big benefit of Cayo Galermo is all the space. With tons of room, even with over 50 kites in the sky, you have plenty of room to ride. You can also explore quite a bit in either direction. If you head to the west, you can kite to Playa Pilar, or if you kite to the east, you can head over to the mangroves and enjoy some epic flat water and tons of room. If you like waves, you'll want to head over to the reef. When here, you'll quickly see where the swimming zone ends and the kite zone begins. Of course, you'll still have to be careful to watch for bystanders and swimmers. There's also a kite school with a clearly marked zone. We recommend that you stay out of this space, unless you like dodging kites. Something else worth mentioning is that there is a large kite school that comes from Montreal, usually for about four weeks at a time, between November and December. If you want to party with a fun group of French Canadians, then you'll have no problem. If you prefer a quieter experience with a little bit more space, then we recommend you book outside of their month. It's been our experience that Ibero Star Daiquiri will book up very quickly and it becomes much more crowded on the beach. There is a fee you must pay in order to use the beach for kiting. This fee is 25 convertible pesos and it will cover you for the duration of your stay. The price also includes a rescue by Sea-Doo, which is not always guaranteed to be there. Generally speaking, it is safe to leave stuff on the beach, like your kites or your boards, as there is a security guard on the beach. With that said, be careful leaving your equipment outside of your room as stuff does go missing overnight, especially if you're on the first floor. The closest international airport is Jardin del Rey, located on a neighboring island. It is about a three and a half hour flight from Toronto and a four hour flight from Montreal. There are direct flights coming from South America, Europe, and Canada. When booking, you'll want to double check the airline's policy on kite gear, 
on checked in versus carry on baggage, the weight restrictions and additional fees, as they do tend to vary from airline to airline. If you book an all-inclusive package, your transportation to and from the airport is covered. Keo Galamo is a 40 minute bus ride from Jardin del Rey, and it's about a 20 minute drive from another very popular tourist destination, Keo Coco. Depending on the airline that you travel with, you may be charged an additional 20 convertible pesos to transport your kiteboarding gear from the airport to the resort. While we've never been charged this personally, we do have friends that have had to pay. If you want to explore Keo Galamo while staying here, you can rent some scooters, you can take a taxi, or you can take the bus. Keo Galamo has a handful of all-inclusive resorts that lie in the coast. We've stayed at Seoul, Melia, and Iberostar Daiquiri. Kiting at Seoul is shallow but choppy, and at Melia, unfortunately, it's completely restricted, so if you want to kite while staying there, you do have to go to the outskirts of the property. Grand Crib has the largest area of shallow flat water for kiteboarding, but it's hands down the worst resort in Keo Galarmo in terms of your accommodation and food. Many Russians actually call it Koshmar, which translated into English means nightmare. The last three times that we've traveled to Keo Galarmo, we've stayed at Iberostar Daiquiri. While we do quite like this resort, we were curious to see what the others were like. Daiquiri is our choice of resort as it has a great kiting beach and the resort is also quite nice. If you're looking for the most modern resort, check out Grand Muzu as it is a new resort, but from what we've heard, the kiting isn't as good as Iberostar Daiquiri. Once you're in Kea Galerma, you'll notice a lot of Canadian tourists and a mix between English and French speaking Canadians. You'll also notice European and Russian tourists here as well. As it currently stands though, Americans can travel to Cuba, but they're heavily restricted and it's not easy at all. While this is unfortunate for our American neighbors, it does likely play favorably to Canadians in terms of the prices. It'll be interesting to see if this changes in the future. We typically book through discount travel sites, but you can book through the airline or through a travel agent. This is how a standard room at Iberostar Star Daiquiri looks. It's not a bad idea to use the safe that comes with your room. There's really no benefit of upgrading to a beachfront room. It's actually better to just request that you're put into a building closer to the kite beach as that tends to work more often. Keep in mind, there's really no guarantees here. So if the resort is full, you may just get the room that you get. If you have flexibility when it comes to booking your vacation, you can just wait and book last minute. This is the best way to avoid getting skunked as you just look at the forecast and you book if it looks solid. Sometimes this can work beautifully. Other times though, you may be out of luck if the resort is already full. This strategy typically doesn't work if you're traveling with a large group as there may only be a handful of tickets, which is kind of a bummer. When it comes to food, it can be hit or miss. As you may have already heard, Cuban resorts are not known for having the best food. Uh, typically, if you're traveling during high season, the food tends to be a little bit better, especially if you're here around Christmas. If you're here in the low season, food is not known for being so good. That being said, if you're a picky eater, you may just want to pack some snacks with you or keep your expectations low. Food and drink is included in your all-inclusive package. However, it is expected that you tip. It's common that you tip for pretty much every service here from front desk to housekeeping. For this reason, you'll want to bring some cash with you to convert into convertible pesos. Some people like to bring small gifts like essentials or clothing to give to the resort staff. You'll find that the shops in the resort are pretty limited and the items that you may tend to lose or forget to bring are generally pretty pricey. So make sure you pack your sunscreen, your sunglasses, your flip-flops, everything like that with you. You do have Wi-Fi access here at the resort. You just buy one of these cards. They're one convertible peso each and it gives you an hour of internet time. And the internet is actually pretty good in terms of the speed and bandwidth. Bring bug spray because on low wind days, black flies are everywhere. In fact, the bugs can be so bad that they spray the island by plane for them. It certainly kills the bugs, not too sure how safe it is for us. There are some things to do in Keo Galamo if there happens to be no wind at all. There are tourist excursions, there are sailing excursions, you can go swimming, snorkeling, you can have some entertainment by the pool, you can walk the beach, you can sunbathe, you can drink, you can check out the other resorts, you can rent scooters, you can go fishing, you can smoke some Cuban cigars, or you can drink some Cuban rum. At night, there is a show and a disco. There's also a cable park, which we haven't tried. Hurricane Irma took its toll, so it's currently out of service until the cable is replaced. If you're a dedicated kiteboarder and you get skunked, we're not gonna lie, it can get pretty boring here, especially if you don't like to lounge on the beach. It's worth repeating that a foil board can truly be a trip saver. 
So what makes Keo Galermo so special? Well, it's an affordable, all-inclusive option with backyard kiting. If kiting is your main objective for your trip, it's just super convenient and easy. You get up, have breakfast, kite. Come in for lunch, kite some more, then have your dinner, chill with some kiters over drinks, maybe go see a show and do some dancing, and repeat the next day. It's a short flight for kiters coming from Ontario and Quebec, and the people here are friendly, from the resort staff to the fellow guests. This beautiful beach and kiting conditions is hard to beat, and when you combine all these factors, it makes Keo Galermo a great place to travel to. All right guys, those are our travel tips for Keo Galermo, Cuba, to have an amazing kiteboarding trip. We want to thank you so much for watching, and if we've missed anything, let us know in the comments below. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.